Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. So I want to make a message today for those of you who are young Christians, and even those of you who are not so young. Because we live in interesting times, and one thing that's interesting about the times we live in is the available um, the availability of information. So in the Word of God we read that knowledge shall be increased and they shall run to and fro. And this is verily the times that we're living in right now. And there's a lot of us who sometimes have fallen into running to and fro on the internet looking for knowledge. and. We want to consider that, that it's good to have understanding and knowledge to, to educate ourselves about certain things. But we also want to bear in mind that the internet is there to be a snare. It's there to catch us. And one thing the internet does frequently is it distracts us and it leads us away from principles that are contained in the scripture. Today I want to address in particular one area in which this can happen because there are many and to try to cover all of them in one video would, would be impossible to take forever. So today I want to talk about the rabbit hole of diet and care of the bodily temple. So let's begin today in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. And this, of course, it, it's important for us to recognize that our physical body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we want to properly care for it, because if we don't, we have a very poor testimony to the world. So, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. There are many ways to defile one's temple, and we talk a lot about that on this channel. One way, of course, is to be addicted to something, to be addicted to cigarettes, or to be addicted to alcohol, or to be addicted to uh, opiate drugs or to psychiatric medication. And all of these things defile our temple. And when we become a Christian, we need to depart from them. Because the word of God says that if we defile our temple, God will destroy us. So we don't want to be in a condition of defiling our temple. And for that reason, a lot of people, when they become Christians, they... they realize they need to depart from these things, and they try to find a way to do so. Another way, and this is what I'm addressing today in this video, is that we can be addicted, is we can be addicted to food and to feeding our flesh or to various beverages, such as highly caffeinated beverages where the caffeine has been extracted from plants that naturally contain it, and then a huge dose of it is injected into various beverages, such as Monster Drink is one of them, and Red Bull is another. You can look at these and, and see that they're ungodly. But caffeine is something that can be abused, and uh, there are things that God has provided in the creation that sometimes are beneficial, but it can be overdone. And of course, we all need to eat and we all need to drink, but we want to use wisdom about these things. So that is the particular topic of the video that I want to talk about today in terms of caring for our temple. Let's go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 25. And every man that striveth for mastery, for the mastery is temperate 
in all things. So I'm, I'm just reading that portion of the verse. When we are striving to attain a crown, when we're striving for mastery, we are temperate in all things. And the enemy, of course, has an interest in getting us to be extreme about this or that. And this can happen when people are considering matters of diet. There are sisters who contact me because they have weight problems before they were saved in Jesus Christ by being baptized in his name and receiving the Holy Ghost. They might have eaten in a way and drank in a way that was unhealthy. Their lifestyle contributed to them becoming overweight. And of course, now they want to live differently. And this is a good thing. We, we want to live differently. However, what I would say is there are a number of things on the internet that will lead you off the path because they're not temperate. They're not balanced. One way that this manifests is that, of course, these days, most of us are aware of the dangers of GMO food and various toxins and poisons in the water. And so we recognize, you know, we might do some research and, and, and see that there are many foods that are actually made by the enemy, you know, Satan and his minions to poison people. And one of the most obvious ones is GMO grains. We want to we want to look at these issues with temperance and we want to also recognize that as Christians that we are promised some things and commanded some things regarding diet. The first place I want to begin to to speak about this from the Word of God, because verily, I don't have anything for anyone other than the Word of God. So in Romans chapter 14, let's begin in verse 1. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. So we can eat all things. This is clear in the scripture. And we, we want to recognize that not only does our behavior, when we're striving for mastery, so when we're trying to walk in a holy way, and achieve mastery over our flesh. The first thing we want to recognize is, is that we want to be balanced and temperate, not only in what we choose to do, but what we speak to other people. Lest we come across as extreme and, and have been diverted from walking in the spirit and now have a fleshly way of walking. Yes, we do want to lose weight if we're overweight. We would want to gain weight if we're underweight. But the, the body is not our primary focus. When, when we're thinking about things to eat, now we need to see what's forbidden to Christians. Because another thing that happens to people when they're considering how to eat is they go to the law and they, they start to hold themselves very strictly to the dietary practices that were commanded to the Israelites in the time of the Old Testament. And there are things about that that are very beneficial, but we don't return to the bondage of the law. So let's go to read what is commanded to Christians regarding diet. Let's go to Acts chapter 15, and let's read verse um, let's begin in verse 28. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication. 
from which if ye keep yourselves ye shall do well fare ye well so the things that that christians are forbidden to eat are things that are meats sacrificed to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication which of course is referring to keeping our temple pure sexually the other three are regarding what we eat this was brought before the uh, the elders in the church in jerusalem because there were contentions about circumcision and the jewish christians thought that all the christians who were from from the gentiles needed to be circumcised that was the main reason why these things had been brought up and then the elders at that time made a decision about what the gentiles needed to hold to in terms of the levitical law and the various things that are contained in the levitical law but these days many christians are looking they want very much to be obedient to god and they get dragged into a rabbit hole of fa adhering to the law all over again this can manifest in in sabbath keeping this can manifest in uh, the the various feasts and new moons and so forth that were commanded unto the the jews in the time of the old covenant that then people start to fall away from from the the simplicity that is in jesus christ and in terms of diet what they'll do is they'll see, see that certain animals were considered to be unclean and and then they they overdo it basically so we don't want to eat things that that have been sac um, meats that were sacrificed unto idols if we're aware that that is the case with those things when we're living in these times though we recognize that there's a lot of poisons there's a lot of things that that cause harm to the body such as gmo foods such as um, factory farmed meat where the the animals are treated cruelly and injected with all kinds of antibiotics and growth hormones most milk and cheese and so forth these days is injected with something called growth hormone and that affects the the person the the human being who's eating these things and what i would say about this is that these kinds of things are best avoided if we can avoid them but because of the hour that we're living in it's impossible to avoid all these things all the just about all the animals are being fed gmo grains and antibiotics and as christians we're commanded to not take part of pharmacia or sorcery so we don't take antibiotics ourselves but it's it's uh it becomes to the point where there's really nothing that is clean and so we have to consider what how to apply temperance to what we eat and i want to to start now i want to speak about te temperance and then i want to talk a little bit more about how christians eat considering these uh, dangers that exist in the food so let's go now to second peter chapter one second peter chapter one And let's begin in verse 4. And whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, lust is anything in terms of what we're talking about today is anything that that pertains to indulging the flesh so someone who overeats is engaging in a lustful behavior someone who is addicted to something is engaging in lust and we have received exceeding great and precious promises that we may escape the corruption that is in the world through lust let's read on and beside this and beside this 
giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, they shall they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. We don't want to forget that we've been washed from our sins in the blood of Jesus Christ. If we've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins, the things that, that kept our flesh in bondage have been washed away. And we want to now walk, particularly I want to refer here to intemperance. What is temperance? A lot of people don't know what temperance is. Temperance is the kind of balance and reasonableness that a Christian is in a Christian character. So we're not extreme. And verily, I get a lot of, you know, people who are religious people who, who believe that extremism is something that God requires. One way that manifests is that I have people commenting on my clothing or my headscarf, uh, acting as if a woman can't wear patterns or pretty colors that we have to walk around dressed like like uh, in black all the time and 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 um, that modesty means that kind of rigid control that's one example of that but it, it manifests in many different ways there's people who believe that that christians need to adhere to to all the feasts and practices and rituals that were commanded to the Israelites in the care of the temple. But these things have passed away. These are ordinances that no longer are the way that, that God's people walk. We walk in the spirit and we fulfill the law by being in the spirit. So when we're walking in a balanced way, we, we, are, we are not extremists. We're not extremists about diet. If we want to lose weight, we can live according to godly principles, and that will make it so that we lose weight. I want to go now to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. Well, let's read verse 7 just to, to give context. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and that which is to come. So if we want to be healthy, if we're living a godly life, we will be healthy. If we're living according to godliness, we won't be overeating and gaining weight. Furthermore, when we're new Christians, once we begin to walk in principles of godliness, the pounds will fall away. For example, if someone who's young in faith thinks that, that had thought in the times past that they could eat anything, any amount of anything that they didn't need to exercise, that they didn't need to behave in a healthy way. And, and a lot of people think this kind of thing, that, that when they come to be a Christian, they're not going to automatically be a healthy weight and have their temple be, be clean. These are things that we learn to walk in. And the enemy comes along and tries to to distract us and lead us away from walking in the principles that we just read in, in, uh, in Second Peter, that the walking according to godliness 
in the spirit. So the enemy comes along, and I just want to give you um, a passage that talks about this. Um, in Second Peter chapter 5, let's read, uh, starting in verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. I would say that in these times, the the roaring lion that is the devil is, is walking about on the internet. And he has a lot of ways that he tries to trick people, particularly those who are young in the faith. So we need to be sober. We need to be temperate. We don't indulge too much one way or too, too much the other way. The narrow way is narrow. And so when we read in the scripture that bodily exercise profiteth little, that doesn't mean it doesn't profit at all. And that then we have uh, permission from the Holy Word of God to lay around all day on the internet, you know, looking at videos or, or just uh, hanging out on the couch, that, that it's important to recognize that these practices only recently even became possible. Before there was a lot of technology and people actually had to grow food and tend to animals and so forth, people were not overweight because they exercised a lot. So bodily exercise profiteth little, but it doesn't mean that it profiteth not at all. And we do need to get exercise. However, there's people who will take that all the way to the other end of it and start thinking that they need to run 10 miles every day and they make their how their physique appears to be an idol so they indulge their flesh on the other end or there's people who take fasting to an extreme so they fast three days a week and they become um, hard and emaciated and rigid because they're not walking in temperance is it a bad idea to fast for three days a week not necessarily, not necessarily. But what I would say is that our focus, when it becomes about our flesh, rather than about walking in godliness, that's where we fall into error. When people come to be Christians, they want to look like they're, they want their temple to appear like they are walking in godliness. And if someone is overweight, they are it appears that they're not, but verily it can take a while for the pounds to fall away. Because, however, people want to to have a, a good appearance so that they are glorifying God in all things, sometimes what the enemy will do is try to lead them away from the narrow way and the principles of temperance and godliness and, and the very simple things that we know as Christians about diet, that he leads people away into, into fad diets, into overly fasting, in, into some kind of extremism. So there's people who become religious vegans. There's people who become religious all the way on the other end, which is to eat nothing but meat. And both are incorrect. Both are incorrect. God gave us his people, good food, and that includes all different kinds of vegetables and fruits. That includes grains, beans, seeds, nuts, oils, uh, and meats. And verily, Christians are not forbidden to eat pork. They're not forbidden to eat shellfish. What I would say, though, is too much of that will make you sick. And also we want to consider the various additives. So now I want to go to Mark chapter 16. Let's go to Mark 16. And I hope you're looking up these passages with me or that you look up them up later. But um, they're in the description box below. Let's read in Mark 16, beginning in verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, 
they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. This is talking about poison. It's talking about a lot of things, but in terms of poison and Christians, if we've been saved in Jesus Christ and had our sins remitted, we don't have to walk in such a way as to be terrified of poison. However, is it a good idea then to just ignore that poisons exist and, and, and tempt the Lord? Well, of course not. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, the, the, Satan said to him, cast thyself down because the angels are given charge over thee. And Jesus replied with scripture. He said, it is also written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And so as Christians, again, this is about balance. When we recognize that there's poison in the water and in the food and even in the air, we want to do our very best to avoid those things because we don't want to tempt God. So it's not a good idea to be eating lots of GMO corn, for example, or to be eating a lot of um, sugar. But we also don't want to fall way over to the other end, which is to do a lot of research on the internet. And then people say, well, strawberries have sugar in them, so don't eat strawberries. And and the, the beef cattle are fed GMO grains, so never eat beef. Never eat beef, or um, that that uh, the water contains fluoride. So so don't drink water. Only drink juice. Whatever kind of extremism it it is, and I, verily I'm not telling anyone what to eat or not eat here, because what you eat is between you and the Lord. What I am saying though is that Christians walk in holiness and temperance; that they don't fall into extremism because then they become a kind of a health nut and, and a, a diet fanatic and, and their flesh has an exalted position in their mind and they become distracted with many things. Let's go now to uh, Romans 8 and let's begin in verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh so when we're thinking about diet a lot we're minding the things of the flesh is it wrong to consider healthy food of course not but again this is about temperance i'm not telling people at all not to consider these things but to consider them according to the Spirit of God and the promises that are given to us in Scripture. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. We want to be walking after the Spirit, and we read about that in second peter chapter one the things that we do when we're walking after the spirit that we're we're primarily as christians what we're focused on is serving jesus christ 
And if we're doing that, we're not going to be overeating. And we're not going to be wasting time either on the internet doing all kinds of research about how to do anything with our temple, whether it is to uh, understand, you know, how to prevent cancer, to understand how to um, lose weight. Because if we're living in godliness, then we're going to get bodily exercise. We're going to be walking around talking to people not just sitting on the couch all day. We're, we're going to be outside speaking to people in the sunshine and fresh air. We're going to be speaking to them the words of life and godliness and walking in the spirit is what brings health and life. And we can read of this in Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter 8, let's read about wisdom in verse 32. So wisdom is something that we want to have and we want to have godly wisdom not the wisdom of men now therefore hearken unto me o ye children for blessed are they that keep my ways hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gates waiting at the posts of my doors so someone who is seeking wisdom from God's word and following the principles contained in scripture is blessed. For whoso findeth me, so whoso findeth wisdom, findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. So wisdom is about balance. And the way that we walk as Christians is to recognize that, that trying to care for our flesh is something that we want to, to do because it's wise to do so. But we don't allow the enemy to trick us into following things that are extreme and also a poor testimony. So yes, it's a poor testimony if someone is overweight. It's also a poor testimony, though, if someone is overly preoccupied with uh, diet and, and following various things on the Internet. Bodily exercise profiteth li little. And what I would say is that these days, there are many people who exalt their flesh to be something where, where they're attending to it all the time. So they're always exercising and they're focused on they're eating this or they're not eating that and how to purify everything and how to to um, become holy by works of flesh rather than walking in the truth of scripture and recognizing is that if you cease from sin, so all Christians, we we know that we have sin in us, but we still strive for mastery, to walk in holiness. So if we're striving to walk in holiness, the matters of the flesh will attend to themselves. So Jesus said in Mark 16 that these signs shall follow them that believe. So Christians who are walking in holiness are not full of devils. Christians who are walking in holiness are not concerned about various poisons to the point where their whole focus is about trying to preserve their life. And verily, this is problematic in these times because we do see that the enemy has presented many poisons and toxins to the people. And we want to avoid them if we can. But if we're praying over our food and walking with Jesus Christ every single day, then we know that we are promised that these things won't harm us. So I want to close this particular video now with in Psalm, um, pardon me, um, pardon me, I forgot there for a minute where I was going. Let's go to Psalm 91. So Psalm 91. There are many pestilences and diseases and poisons in the foods these days. It doesn't take a lot of research to know that it's probably a good idea to avoid eating corn 
or a lot of grains these days because most of them have been con contaminated with viruses and pesticides so that it's actually poison. You're eating poison if you're eating those things. However, let's look at what's promised unto us. So we read earlier that we have great and precious promises as Christians. And so we don't have to worry about drinking any deadly thing if it happens to get into us when we're doing our best to be di diligent, to walk in holiness and take care of our temple. Verily, there's a big difference between smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol and eating potato chips all day. And a Christian who might have done those things, learning to walk in holiness, that they're not going to be doing those things. And if they're overweight, they naturally will shed those pounds. So in Psalm 91, in particular, I want to uh, begin in verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor by the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. So there's various pestilences, toxins, poisons, intentionally put into the food supply. And we know as Christians that we don't have to fear that. We're not stupid about it. We don't tempt God and lay around again on the couch eating GMO corn chips and, and uh, drinking beer because those aren't that that's not living in godliness that's living in sloth that's living in self-indulgence and gluttony and it's not something that we would want to do we're active we're busy about the lord's business and we we will eat what is set before us in the service of Jesus Christ and if we receive it with thanks we don't need to worry about it so what i was wanting to draw your attention to my my sisters is about rabbit holes, about becoming overly focused on, on trying to clean up our temple in ways that the enemy then leads us away from the, the spirit, walking in spirit, walking in the ways of Jesus Christ. So we don't need to have a whole new set of dietary laws for the last days. Rather, when we're walking in Jesus Christ and serving him every day, we can know that whatever difficulties our flesh might have because of the way we walked before we are saved, that those things will fall away from us. And we don't need to be terribly worried about them. So if you have a weight problem, set your, your mind upon, upon the things above, upon walking in holiness, about focusing your attention on glorifying God, speaking the gospel to pe people, being busy in the word of God, testifying to other people, sharing with other people. Do your best to eat healthy food. Do your best not to indulge yourself to the point where, where you're overeating and falling into sloth and gluttony. And if you do that, you will be blessed with health. So I want to close now. And Psalm, I believe it's Psalm 109. And the Lord just put this on my heart. Uh, Psalm, Psalm 119. Let's read in Psalm 119, beginning in verse 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant, who is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. 
The righteousness of a Christian is righteousness by faith. And we trust that Jesus Christ has made it so, so that we can live in holiness, something that was not available to the Israelites who lived under the law. They had to send animals to be sacrificed for their sin frequently because they could not walk in holiness. But because of our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, who laid down his life once for our sins, now we can trust in that and walk in the Spirit. And the Spirit fulfills the law. So if we want to be healthy, we don't need to follow the dietary laws of the ancient Israelites. But do we act foolishly and tempt God by eating any old thing and having utter disregard for our temple? No. But again, there's a difference between food and eating something like heroin. We want to recognize that food was made by God. Apples are good. Strawberries are good. Carrots are good. And if we can find things like seeds and nuts and, and, and grains that were not grown with genetically modified viruses and so forth in them, then it's okay to eat those things as well. Verily, if we're trying to avoid all poison, we'll starve to death. And we won't breathe either because the poisons are in the air. So I hope I've clarified the matter of temperance regarding diet. And feel free to email me if you have a specific question, uh, because I know there probably will be a lot more questions about this. Uh, or to make a comment in the comment section below. May the word of God go forth today and edify many. In Jesus' name, amen.